let's start at free agency just because, first of all, you know, you guys at home, y'all know I still got two years left under my, my contract with the Lakers. Uh, or, you know, at least at least another minimum of two years. Maybe it may extend, depending on how we feel about it, depending on when Bronny's ready to um, come up to the, to, the, to the league and whatnot. Um, but we might as well just start there because we got a couple of pieces. One in particular that I that I I, I really liked for two reasons. Uh, one, well, well, let's start. Let's start there. Tell me, tell me the move you like most because there's so much movement. Yeah. And combo, I want you to go next. Let me know what you guys, what signing so far has really piqued your interest. All right. So, all right. First of all, I love the Dennis Schroeder trade. Uh, six men of the year uh, candidate last year. So I think he's going to be good coming off the bench. Somebody that can can score the basketball and handle handle the rock. Bring over a three and D guy, Wesley Matthews Jr. I think he's going to be fit right in with this uh, lineup. But the, the the one piece that I liked the most was the Montrez Harrell signing. And the reason why I liked this so most because it was so it was so hilarious for me the fact that you know he left the Clippers to come join the the, the winning team. If you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. And you know so not only like I said he's going to be on the Lakers roster, he will no longer be on the Clippers roster. And there was one other signing that wasn't for LA that actually made me the happiest in regards to this whole situation. And that was Rajon Rondo going to Atlanta. I was so glad that Rondo didn't go to the Clippers and, and, uh, and, and it helped him out, make them, make them that much better. Cause I think he still has a lot left in the tank, especially for a playoff run. And I thought he would have been a, a really good fit for them had they signed him. But, you know, he wanted that check. So he went down to Atlanta. So I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about, uh, about the move so far. Uh, we extended uh, Caldwell Pope, so he'll be back. And the Lakers aren't done. They, they got they got one or two moves uh, left in them. They're probably going to bring in a big man, uh, maybe Mark Gasol. Uh, maybe if they if they if they do a little stretching, they might be able to bring in in Whiteside. Um, and then they're going to bring in another wing player. And then we're going we're going to get back to it, and we we're going to work on repeating. What about you? Combo. Who who were you most interested or intrigued by when you saw who they were going to or what what their new team would be? Well, Lakers Schroeder was that was a great pickup for them. They needed somebody who could uh, create offense off the dribble. That's something they really were lacking in. Um, I like Shemit to Brooklyn. I think he's going to pop more with them. Um, I don't think he was utilized right with LA. They were trying to make him like a point guard, and that's not really his game. He's going to be able to have that run off screens, run around, create chaos, make threes, play defense. I mean, his defense isn't great, isn't super great, but it's, you know, it's okay. I think he's going to play a lot better there. Uh, Drew Holiday, Milwaukee, big pickup. I mean, they missed out on bogey. That would have been the same, man. They would have been tough with those two. Uh, but Drew, Drew helps them. He Hopefully they'll play Giannis a little bit more off the ball and maybe give him some different looks. I don't think they could keep doing what they were doing. He's going to have to make an adjustment this year. Um, I like Dwight. I've heard people, uh, I like Dwight to Philly. They needed a back, they needed a backup big. I know Joel wanted him there. That was big. So that's just some of my thoughts, man. There's so many moving parts here. It's insane, man. Uh, I did an IG, I did an IG live Friday with my guy Pierre from through the wire and man, just things kept popping up out of nowhere. Like John Wall wanting to leave Washington. It's just insane. What's going on, man. Make it to the finals. Um, since they weren't able to complete the bringing over um, Bogdanovich, do you think they can still make it to the finals with just the additions of uh, Drew Holiday being like the, the, the best guy they brought in? Man, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't bet on them to win the finals, but I think I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think they can win. I'm just saying, make it to the finals. Because remember, they haven't been to. I don't know. I like, I like Philly better than them. I like Miami better than them. Even maybe, even in. Even the Celtics, you know, so I don't know about that. I like Drew Holiday a lot, but I think Bogey and Drew Holiday would have put them over the top for real. Like, so we'll see what yeah. develops. I think I like a few teams in the East better than them right now. Yeah, I uh, I, I like Philly's moves and, and the, the names you guys mentioned are all very interesting. Um, the, the Laker move to get Montrez, it'll be interesting to see how they try to play him with Anthony Davis. Uh, because we know Montrez has some limitations, but I definitely like Schroeder for them. They needed another ball handler. Um, they needed somebody who could take that pressure off Braun, especially with this uh, hectic turnaround of, you know, the season starts in a month. Um, I like that move, but I really like what Philly did because for so long we talked about how could uh, Ben and Joel coexist. Well, now with the amount of shooters that they brought over there, they can coexist now. You know, you, you get rid of Horford, um, who just wasn't a fit there, 
but you bring in Seth Curry, you bring in Danny Green, you bring in Dwight to be a big off the bench. I really love Tyrese Maxey. Um, he was one of my guys I was spotlighting in, in the in the draft. So I like the moves they've made a, a lot. And I actually like them more than Milwaukee, as you mentioned, Combo. Milwaukee with bogey, I thought, could have been really scary. I mean, think about yeah, it. Yeah. Last six to eight minutes of a game, they could have tried it out a lineup of Brooke Lopez, Giannis, bogey, Drew, Drew. and Chris Middleton. Like, That's that would have been tough. a really... Yeah, now that that's that's nothing but shooters on the floor for Giannis to be able to go to work. And, and then it's a super modern lineup. It's a modern NBA lineup. For sure. Very modern lineup. And yeah. it, it alleviates the ball handling. Now Giannis doesn't have to be the primary focus every offensive possession. So I would have loved that move for him. I like Bobby Portis for them coming off the bench because I think he's going to be a better fit than Robin Lopez um, for them. But Bogey, to me, would have put him over the top. But all, all in all, to me, what Philly has done so far has been great. Yeah, Seth Curry was big for them. Um, they're they're trying to go back to what they were before, just put shooters around those guys. They kind of had it at one point with JJ. Um, they're just, the Phillies just talented on the court, head coaching and front office. They're they're talented on all three levels, man. So, you know, they I got agree. Ben and Joel on the court. They got Doc as a head coach, and they got Daryl in the front office. I mean, you got the talent. Now we just yeah. got to figure it out and make it work. Yeah, so, Philly, Philly has upgraded you. every major aspect of their organization this all season. Hundred percent. They have to stay healthy. That's going to be the biggest hurdle for Philly um, because we know that Embiid and Simmons are both injury prone. I'm, I was I was glad that they were able to get out of the Al Horford contract because it just didn't work. And that's not to say that I think Al Horford is done because I think he still can contribute a lot. Just Philly just wasn't the place for him. Um, but I, I do I do love the additions, man. Like they 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 got those shooters in, like like you mentioned. Do do you think we still see one of those guys get moved, even with the additions that they just made? Combo, go. I'll let you go first. Combo. So, which team is this? Philly. Philly. Do I see who? No. I. I mean, well, first of all, I would not move them if it was my decision. And uh, there's a chance they'll move one of them, but I, I wouldn't like to see them. I, I'd like to see them run it back. I'd like to see them run it back with Daryl there and Doc there. So they need one season with both of them. Aim. What'd you say? You move Ben Simmons that you could get Dame. No. No, I wouldn't. I agree. I, I wouldn't either. Um, one season is probably going to be the key. They're going to keep them together. We got to remember Daryl Morey's uh, track record. He loves pairing superstars together. The, the eight years that Harden was there, he did nothing but try to find that, that superstar form. So the only way I would see him, the only way I would see him trading one of them is if he was getting a Harden type player um, but to your point, Trip, I wouldn't move Ben for Dame because Ben is younger and there's just more versatility in regards to what you could do with your lineup. Um, Dame's a great player, don't get me wrong, but I, I just don't know. It, you can't build the roster around Dame the way you can around Ben. You know, with Ben, as we see now, because he's built like a four but can handle the ball like a one, you can just put a bunch of shooters out there and let's say, like, let's just go to work on teams. So I don't think they move either one of those guys, at least not, not this season. Doesn't work Definitely out. not this season. I think they, they want the one of them. Say, say that, that again? again. If it doesn't work out this season, let's say they, they don't make it out of the second round again this season, you think this is happening? Definitely. Well, season one it, of them is gone. It depends on health and it depends on the results. Like if they get to the finals, uh, they lose to the Lakers, I would run it back again and see what you could do in the offseason. If one of them gets hurt or both of them get hurt or you know, the chemistry isn't there again, then I might think about it, you know, but right now they're building really well around those two players. And I like what I like, I like what I'm seeing. Yeah. It, it would depend on how it ended. Um, if it ended like it did two seasons ago where they lost on a lucky shot to Toronto, you have to say, run it back. Right. Like you, we know that was kind of a fluky yeah. shot uh, this year. Injuries kind of prevented us being able to see what they could look like in the playoffs um, but if it's a total collapse where they just get outplayed, then yeah, you, you probably move on from one of those guys. Um, I have been up to thinking and, and combo and I've gone back and forth on this. I don't think Brent Brown really had the respect that I locker room, you know? Um, and I think that's something that we, we may see change this year. I, I want to see if MB going to come in in shape and be committed to being the dominant force he can be, because we know when Embiid is on his game, he is the best low post player in the game. I don't think there's anybody better than him on the block when he's on his game. I think as, a, the, as a scorer, for sure. Yeah, as a, yeah. with Doc, I think, is automatic. Like, you know, you, you got to put respect on, on Doc Rivers' name as soon as he steps into the building. So I think, yeah, at least from that standpoint, I think we'll see a huge difference. 
You might even see Embiid and, and you know what I'm saying getting in the best shape he's ever been with with, uh, with with Doc Rivers. Yeah, I heard he helped recruit Dwight, so he's he's making moves. He's making moves. Yeah. We'll <laughs> see. I, I see Dwight stay with the Lakers, but you know it is it, it is it is what it is. He definitely put in work for for the Lakers uh, this past season, so he deserves to, to have opportunity to go where he wants. Well, I think I think I think the Lakers, um, you know, they, they went for more versatility. And that's why you bring in Montrez, you go after Schroeder. Uh, they want to be a little more versatile, you know, and they and they saw it in the finals, too. I, I don't think Dwight had the same value to them in a finals matchup than he did in that Western Conference. You know, in the Western Conference against Jokic, you needed an athletic big man like that. Yeah. That's the role Montrez is going to have to fill now. Yeah. Yeah. Not as good on defense, but better on offense and more versatile. Oh yeah, he's definitely not as good because uh, Joker was giving him the business the whole second round. Yeah, so, and he's not, and he's not the lob threat that Dwight is. So you no. know, it's just different. It's just different. Yeah. That's, That's a fact. It's gonna be interesting to see. In Actually, you know what? I mean, Dwight might be a piece that fits better around star power than, you know, Montrez. Uh, especially the way Dwight bought in. Not thirty-year-old Dwight. The current Dwight and the way he played is really yeah. good player to build around star players. So. Uh, we'll see how this Montrez thing works out, but I think it'll be good, and I think they're going to be better this season, and I think that's, they're the favorites. That's a great point. He learned a lot this past season as well. I think he humbled himself a lot, and I think that's going to carry over very well going over to Philly and working with Embiid and having 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 that 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 roster around him. I think he's going to do well, in Philly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, I think so too. It's a great point about fitting in with guys. And, and speaking of uh, complimentary pieces, trying to fit in with stars, Joe Harris just signed a, a massive extension with the Nets, about $19 million a year. Combo, you you were big on him um, before the end of the season. So I want to start with you. What are your thoughts on the signing? Um, and, and ultimately, how does he fit on this current team as it's, as it's constructed? Yeah, so they could use Shemit and Joe kind of like how Miami uses – Duncan and Tyler just have them all running around crazy around their two-star players. I had Seth part now of the athletic on my show. It was a little while back now, but he said, not only they need Joe Harris, they need another Joe Harris. They need two Joe Harris's. So I mean, it didn't surprise me that they re-signed him. He's an important piece for them. Now they got Shemit as well. And I think it'll work really well. I, I like what they're doing over there. I like what they're building. It seems like all these teams are actually getting better. So it's going to be interesting to see how this NBA season shakes out. Yeah, I, I I I definitely agree. I, I was glad they they were able to re-sign Joe Harris. I didn't think they were going to be able to do it. He got because he got he definitely got paid a, a nice little check to uh to stay in Brooklyn. But I, I just think that with Durant and Kyrie, like you definitely it's, it's it's a blessing to be able to have a shooter of that level right next to you on on the wing because you know you know Kyrie once he starts dribbling the basketball going inside the paint. Joe Harris is going to get those looks. Same thing with, with, with Kevin Durant. He's going to get those looks. So to have a knockdown three-point shooter who's probably top five in the league right now next to those guys, I think it's going to be great. They also added um, Jeff Green as well. Um, I like that addition too. Nicely, exactly. Nice veteran. Um, you know, I, And you could go small ball five with him. Yep, exactly. You know, Durant at the four. That's tough. Exactly. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought when they signed Jeff Green. That that that's perfect for a small ball lineup, uh, depending on matchups on that particular night. Exactly. Right. All these picks, I kept like in my mind, I just kept thinking as I'm watching free agency go down. Though, like I'm literally, this is I'm saying to myself, yeah, this is shaping up. If everyone stays healthy, L.A. Brooklyn in the finals. Yeah, I, I could see it. Uh, it's, but, it's possible. Uh, go ahead, combo. Yeah, I could see it. It's just the East is a lot tougher than uh, people might think. And the West might not actually be as good as people might think. It might be a lot closer than people think between those two conferences. So uh, we'll see what happens. Philly's going to be really good. Miami's probably going to be good again. So Celtics yeah. are going to come back strong. Uh, it's going to be tough. But and even when, in you the have, when you have KD on your team, and I love Kyrie, I love Kyrie's game. When you have KD on your team, you always have a chance because that guy's the cheat code, you know? No, that, yeah, that's the cheat code. The, the West is a little more top heavy, um, where the East has a little more balance. I think we could name four or five teams in the East that have legitimate shots. Um, in regards to Joe Harris, I want to get back on that real quick. I, I think it's a little bit of an overpay, but obviously they, they need that shooter on the floor. 
And it may signal the fact that they know they're not really in the running to add that big time third star. We heard the rumors about trying to go after Harden. So taking on or, or re-signing Joe Harris at 19 million kind of takes you out of the running for that type of trade, I think. Um, which I'm I'm okay with. Um, to to make it to the, to make it to the finals, even win the finals, I don't think they need Harden. I think with K- Kyrie and KD and the rest of that roster, they can definitely make it to a finals. Um, you know, right? So- and that's what. No, no, that's what I was gonna say. I'm, you're I'm, saying I'm, there's better balance. You're right. I was gonna balance. say. I think. I think if you're a Nets fan, you should feel comfortable about that and knowing that. Look, we still have good assets like Dinwiddie, like Harris, like Jared Allen to fill out this roster that gives us more depth moving forward. And, and if you do feel the need to make a move for a piece, it doesn't have to be a mega piece of like James Harden. It could be another quality piece to fit in with this, with this team. Um, but yeah, I, I still think they have a lot of question marks, man. I, I still got to see it on the court. I still got to see how Steve Nash is going to handle t- uh, late game situations and, and, and what type of offense they're going to run um, before I put them ahead of, as you mentioned, Boston, Philly, um, Milwaukee, Miami. I think, yeah, Miami. I think the Nets are in that mix, but I can't put them clearly above any other team there because we just haven't seen it on the court. Well, here's my question. Can you put any team ahead of all the others? I think if, if we did a pecking order, I mean, you could make a legitimate case that Boston. I knew you were going to go with Boston. I well, knew I'm, go I'm, I'm, Boston. I'm going I'm, I'm going by the teams. My, but my it's funny that I do that. I do. Of it. course, because I, I like I like their team a lot. <laughs> I understand. Um, I understand. But I look at I look at this, this season in particular. Boston's gonna, too. By the way, paying Pritchard is tough. Kid is yeah. tough. Yeah. Um, and and Boston made a very good move with Tristan Thompson, who I think is going to yeah. be very good for them late game situations because we know they lack size. Bam Bam might have not have hurt them as bad if they had Tristan last year. For sure. Oh, and, and I mean, then Daniel Tice goes to the bench where I think he's probably more comfortable coming off of the bench. So, yeah. uh, in a season like this where everything's going to be so fast paced and condensed. I'm looking at the teams that already have chemistry. Those are the teams to me I think are gonna are gonna succeed this season. Right. Smush Parker here, pulling me up to Los Angeles Lakers. And you are now tuned into Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Live the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. 